Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and we would like to welcome you from all over the United States and around the world to our Crafter Noon event. We do this every Wednesday at noon central time, and uh, let's say hello to Tom. Hey, Tom. Happy Crafter Noon. How are you today? Doing great. How are you? Getting the day going? I am, yeah. Eventually, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> Same here. Well, it is great to see you. You having a good one? I am, yeah. I uh, I found out today that I matched my project that I'm going to do. Because when I was picking colors a few minutes ago, I decided to go with Innocent Pink and Dusty Rose. So I think I'm going to be matching myself today. Okay, so that happens quite often. It does? Yeah, where, where you're, what you're wearing seems to coordinate with the project that you didn't know you were going to do. And the colors you didn't know you were going to pick. So. I, I I wonder if that's just because I tend to make everything in turquoise and almost my whole wardrobe is in turquoise. <laughs> that could be. But could it, that be? That wasn't today. That wasn't today. No, this was just a coincidence. Well, I kind of um, was thinking of Valentine's Day because, you know, pinks and reds are very popular for Valentine's Day. And I did a Valentine's Day card last week and I got a few frowny faces because I did a rainbow instead of pinks and, and stuff. So I thought I would stick with tradition today. Okay. That sound like a plan? Yep. And then you're going to be with me next Monday night, right? We're going to, we're going to craft together. Uh, yeah. Don't know how we're going to quite do that technically yet, but that's plan and that's how we do things we we're just book it and then figure it out that's right so um everybody can hear tom okay right yeah just, just making sure okay because somebody had said sometimes they have trouble and i wanted to make sure you're loud enough over there in the dead space <laughs> yeah it's tough in the dead space <laughs> oh well all right everyone well today i thought that i would use what are two layering stencil sets? Definitely I'm going to use um, the Fluttering Fall. I want to do butterflies today. And I'm in a spring mood, even though that's a fall. It says Fluttering Fall. Butterflies are good in the spring and the summer as well. So I wanted to use that. And I thought about maybe using the layered hearts today as well. But I also might just go with a little pattern stencil for the background. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see what comes about. So let's get started. I'm going to show you the stencil set that I am going to use today. So this is it right here. This is the, uh, the butterflies. We can go to the overhead. This is the butterfly stencil here fluttering fall. We've got the outlines, then we've got the details, and then we've got some flowers that all coordinate with this entire stencil set. Now, this is a bundle. It's still available at Gina K Designs. Our bundles are such a great value. This one has a really big stamp set that goes with it, too. Look how big this stamp set is. I should probably get a piece of cardstock to show you. Look at how big this one is. And what's cool about this stamp set is you can use these butterflies without the outlines, even though they look really great stenciled with the outlines. You can just use these as stamps as well. And they've got really great greetings in here. I'll probably use the, I'm probably going to use something different, although love you so much would be great uh, for this card. We'll see. But there's lots of options here. And then, of course, there is a full die set, big die set that has tons of dyes in it. So I will be using that as well. So when I like, when I do these layered stencils, one thing that I like to do is I actually like to cut out, to cut out the images first. I think it's easier to line them up, even if I'm doing flowers or whatever, but especially with these butterflies. So let's start there. Let me get my little Spellbinders machine out. I love my new turquoise machine. Thank you very much to the fine people at Spellbinders for sending this to me. I really appreciate it. I love it. All right. And I'm going to cut all three of these butterflies out. 
Oh, thank you guys. I'm so glad that you guys enjoyed the video yesterday. If you uh, haven't seen it yet, I posted it in our Facebook group. It is actually Rena's little TikTok video. So if you're on TikTok, you can look for Reen Bean 4, R-E-A-N-B-E-A-N 4. That's her handle on TikTok. And I'm cutting all three of these out at once. And what she did was she, <laughs> it was really funny here, guys. It was so funny. She and Alicia did this whole thing where they ended up getting like, I don't know, like 35 wigs, compliments of Tom. Tom paid for all the wigs. And I'm going to cut two sets of butterflies in case I mess up. And um, they had everybody in the building here at work put on a Gina K wig. Kind of looked more like my hair from my old videos. And um, they told everybody to dress in their best Gina K stuff. So lots of people were wearing black. A lot of people, even though it's winter here, were wearing flip-flops because I am known to wear flip-flops in the winter at work. <laughs> A few of them had headbands on, um, and it was it was really funny and fun, and so they surprised me. I showed up, and everybody was dressed like me. It was very, very funny, very cute. They were high-quality wigs, too. They were <laughs> those wigs, man. <laughs> now there's a whole bucket of wigs, so if anybody would like a Gina K wig, maybe we should give those away, Tom. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so for this card, I want to make a mini slimline card. So I have the mini slimline dies here. This is from Master Layout 7. And I am going to cut a white one using the uh, stitched mini slimline die. Now, if your dies ever bend a little bit, you know, you can just lightly bend them back into shape. It's okay. Sometimes they bend because the plates bend and they just start bending with the plates. So Cheryl wants to know what flavor of cheesecake. Oh, it was just plain New York style cheesecake, which was, was great for me. Cheese flavor. Cheesecake flavor, yeah. No, there wasn't anything fancy, but my kids know that I really like plain stuff. Like I'm a vanilla ice cream person. I just like like the more plain stuff. So Alicia got two New York style cheesecakes. Okay, so I'm also going to cut out, while I'm cutting, I'm going to cut out one black panel using the plain die from Master Layouts. I don't know what we're going to do with the wigs. I was thinking of just donating them to, um, you know, Goodwill or something, because I am sure that for Halloween, you know, people always go to places like that to try to find stuff. I don't know. No, the wigs weren't very good quality. Tom is kidding. They were like 10 bucks a wig. <laughs> so <laughs> they weren't good quality wigs at all. All right. So I have my black panel, I have my white panel, and I have all of my butterflies. So now we can get started. Now, one of the things that I don't do enough, but is really fun to do with these layering stencils, is to not just ink blend on them, but also to add a little bit of embossing. So... I'm going to do the embossing first, and here's why. This is a little trick that some of you may struggle with here and there. I don't know. I tend to struggle with this, so I like to do it this way. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to emboss the details into these butterflies, just the details. But I'm going to do them first because if I ink all of this up, if there's any wet ink anywhere, it's going to grab the embossing powder. And I don't want it to grab the embossing powder. So I'm going to actually do the embossing first, and then I'm going to go in an ink blend on top. It's not going to damage the embossing because I could just wipe it right off. It won't stick to that. So let's do our embossing first. I'm going to actually emboss the antennas. I know that's not what they're called. They might be. I don't know. But I'm going to emboss them first. And so one thing that makes it a little bit easier when they're already die cut out is to take a little bit of tape, just a tiny bit. I can't pick this up because I cut all my nails. Can you believe it? Let me get a tool for this to make it easier for me. Where's my tool? I can't even find my tools. How about this? 
Nope. All right. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to just put a tiny little bit of the Gina K Designs dot runner on the back. And then I'm going to just stick it down. By doing that, it's not going to shift around. And I can just hold my stencil in place while I work. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use white pigment ink for this. I really like using white pigment ink through stencils more so than Versamark. And you can use white pigment ink or any pigment ink as an embossing ink as well because it stays wet for a while. And then I'm going to use some gold fine detail um, powder. Okay. So in order to do this, I'm not going to use a blending brush. Instead, I'm going to use, let me get this in here. I'm going to use a sponge dauber. I really like using a sponge dauber when I'm using embossing ink of any kind through a stencil because instead of blending in a circular motion where it just kind of dusts color, this actually presses color down into the stencil. And I like that a lot. So I'm just using this plain old sponge dauber. I'm really getting it inky. And then I'm going to press that ink into those spots. And it really does help too with the, um, the small details because you're just pressing down in there. You can wiggle it when you press it down in there. Just hold the stencil still. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pull this off. And then I'm going to get some embossing powder on here. Now, I should have used my embossing magic pad first. So we'll have to see how this goes. Hopefully it's not too staticky. Okay, that's looking pretty good, right? All right, let's get this out of the way. And I'm going to use a clothespin for this because this is small. So I'm going to hold it with a clothespin. And then I'm going to use my Wagner heat tool for this. Now I'm going to heat it up a little bit first. I'm just blowing away the excess here. All right. Now I'm heating it up first because I don't want my butterfly to warp too much. And the hotter my embossing tool is, the quicker it's going to emboss. So here we go. There we go. Oh, that's pretty. All right, so there's my first one. I'm going to put that aside. See, it barely warped at all. Now I'm going to get my next butterfly. These are so much fun. Butterflies are always in fashion. I mean, they're such a great symbol for just about anything. You can use them for sympathy cards. You can use them for little girls' birthday cards. You can use them for big girls' birthday cards. I just love butterflies. All right. So I'm holding that in place again using the dauber. And pressing down in here. Oh, I did want to talk a little bit while I'm talking about this. I did want to talk a little bit about my last video. And I know a lot of people are struggling because your stamps are not pulling off the color. What I realized, and I did update the description, but not everybody reads my description on YouTube. Um, what I did find out is I did not use Canon photo paper. I used Walgreens brand photo paper, and that probably made all the difference. So if you're buying photo paper, get the cheap stuff at Walgreens. I actually put a link in the uh, description here on YouTube on that video because otherwise it just wasn't pulling the color off. Although those backgrounds are still beautiful, you can use them for, um, you know, for backgrounds and, and you could cut other kinds of die cuts out of them. Okay. Hey, I'm doing pretty good considering I keep forgetting to uh, use my embossing magic here. It's looking pretty good, actually. I'm using my expensive watercolor paintbrush to dust <laughs> to dust this away because I don't know how to watercolor. So I bought the brushes thinking the brushes would make me good, and I realized it's not the brushes at all. It's the hand that holds the brush. <laughs> all right. So here we go again. And I'm doing these, you know, one at a time. 
as far as the parts, I'm also going to add the other detail in here, but I decided to just do one at a time. And here's my last one. I hope you're all having a relaxing Wednesday. Here's the last one. And this is why I like to cut the butterflies out first, because if I were to try to cut that out after I already embossed it and everything, I'm sure I wouldn't get it anywhere near as centered as I'm getting this. Okay, again, smashing that white in there. Okay. Boy, I'm awfully quiet today. Why am I quiet? It's not good. Okay. So now we have that one. And it's nice because you can kind of see the white on the white because it's a little bit of a different color white. So it makes it easy to make sure that you've actually gotten all the spots. And you can see how nicely it embosses using the white um, ink. So if you, if you struggle with embossing ink, try a white pigment ink pad. <laughs> Works really well. Okay. Got a little bit there. Now, if I touch it wrong, I need better glasses for that. I need like super mega glasses. Oh, you're welcome. I, I felt so bad because I thought it was Canon paper. I threw the packaging away and then I realized I went back into the trash later and I saw the packaging and I realized that it was Walgreens cheapo paper. Walgreens doesn't even sell Canon paper. At least mine doesn't. Okay. So I have those done. Now let's get the details in here. So I'm going to start with this one and add these details. I am going to get a little messy, but oh, look how pretty that is. I love that. Okay, again, um, to clean the ink off, I'll show you. I'm going to clean it off with just a little bit of stamp cleaner, the Gina K stamp cleaner. It'll take it right off. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of um, glass cleaner afterwards to get the oily residue off. But you can also just take these right to your sink with a little bit of Dawn dishwashing detergent and um, it'll wash right off. It doesn't damage the stencil at all using pigment ink. Okay, let's see how that is. Hopefully that's good, looks pretty good. It's hard to grab without messing it up. I think I did okay. So I will grab one of the antennas here. Okay, here we go. And then we can put any color we want on top of this once this is all embossed. Ooh, look at my mess here. Sometimes just blowing on it works better than all the, you know, trying to use something to scrape it off. Isn't that pretty? That's pretty just like that. You wouldn't even have to add ink love the details and you can get down to the tiniest little details in there and I love the gold but I bet it would look gorgeous in silver too when it comes to jewelry I'm more of a silver girl I guess you guys have noticed that um, but there's something about gold embossing powder that's so elegant well gold jewelry is elegant too all right we go for our next one. Should I use a little embossing magic? Watch, it'll mess everything up. <laughs> That's the embossing magic pad. And this one has really tiny dots. So let me move up a bit here. 
we go. This one is really tiny dots, so I'm going to really work to squeeze color in there. Definitely, Donna, you could do this on colored cardstock and it would be beautiful. You wouldn't even have to go back and do the ink blending on top if you didn't want to. I'm going to try to achieve a little bit of a color blend, which is why I want to try using the stencil instead, but, but we'll see how that works. I'm going to really smoosh into those small holes. Okay. This one might not be as even, but that's all right. I'm getting a little inky here. Oh, it's so dry here in Wisconsin. I am so dry. No matter how much lotion I put on, I just dry right back out. I'm ready for summer. How about you guys? <laughs> All right. Ooh, that's, that is a pretty little design, isn't it? I like this, this butterfly, Alicia, when she drew these, I remember she said on this one, she wanted to make the details look like hearts and they do look like little hearts. It's so cute. You can reuse the dauber, can't you? Oh, yes, for sure. Yeah, you can wash the dauber, too, if you want. It's not a problem. So there's the second one. Okay, we've got two. And we'll wrap up this third one. Yeah, I know. I, 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 when she started, I'm like, hearts, what do you mean? What do you mean hearts? And she's like, let me show you, Mom. And she was drawing these on her iPad for me. And I said, oh my gosh, now I want them all to have hearts. And she said, no, let's keep them different. This way people have lots of options. <laughs> okay, so here is my final one down here. Hold that into place. And the stamp that she designed to go with it also has the hearts because they're that just mimics what's this design. So it's kind of fun. You can stamp those by themselves and make really pretty backgrounds. This, I think this is definitely one of my favorite layering stencil sets. And again, you know, we talk a lot about like, well, what do you do if you don't have any mojo? Just like making a bunch of elements like this that you can use on cards later is really fun. And they also make really cute little things like refrigerator magnets and little embellishments for your scrapbook pages. They're so pretty. I think we got all the detail. We'll see how this one goes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this back. And of course there's flowers in here and uh, leaves and things like that. So you can create those types of embellishments too. And you can also do those in a embossed look where like the centers of the flowers are embossed or even um, parts of the leaves and stuff like that. If you wanted to use the rest of it, you just have to do this the same way. Just pick parts and then do your stenciling on top. Okay. Alrighty, here we go. Final one. So pretty. All right, so now we've got our detail in there. Let's get rid of the embossing powder for now. And 
now we can start doing a little bit of ink blending on here. So the colors that I was thinking would look really nice with gold is, well, this one, Innocent Pink for sure, matches me a little bit, and also Dusty Rose, and that matches me a little too. So Innocent Pink and Dusty Rose work really nicely together because they both have a little bit of peachiness to the pink, where if you wanted to do a more bluish type of pink, I would suggest Bubblegum Pink and Passionate Pink. Okay. So let's do one at a time here. We'll start with this one. And let me get the, uh, the outside piece. So we we'll just lay that right there like that. Okay. So I want to get a small brush too. This is one of our smaller brushes and one of our bigger brushes. So I'm going to start with the bigger brush and I'm gonna use the Innocent Pink to start. And I'm not gonna go all the way out to the edge. I'm gonna see how that looks. Okay, hold that down. I'm gonna start a little bit in the middle. And just work my way out a little bit. Get a little bit down on, I call them the legs. They're not the legs. You know what I mean, this part. Okay. All right. So just like that. Oh, that's pretty, huh? And then I probably shouldn't take the stencil off when I do the next one, but I have to get my other ink stand. I should have both of these colors. Um, we do sell them. I think they're out of stock. I'm not sure when we're going to get a restock on those. I know that uh, the ink stand is a little mom and pop shop and they get pretty busy, so. But you can also get them in their store. And then I'm gonna go right in the center here with this darker pink. You could come in with the darker pink just a little bit on the edge of the wings. Down here by... <laughs> by the feet. All the nature people are like unsubscribing right now because I'm calling them <laughs> butterfly feet and legs. <laughs> but it's just the areas on the wings. So you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's take a look at this now. It's hard to see when it's laying down, but look how pretty. A little bit of shine in there. Now, if you want to get really bright in the center, you can always go and add, let's find a color, a little red right in the center. So I'm just gonna grab a little red off of here. Just fill that in right in there. I'm gonna put this back on because I don't want it to go outside of the lines. brighten it up in the center. And then I'm using my a piece of paper towel just to get rid of all of that. Now, if you feel like it's dull at all, all you have to do is very gently just take your, um, your heat tool and just heat it up a little bit, just a little bit. Don't burn it, but just heat it up a little bit. Kind of reactivates the shine a little bit. See that? Okay. Okay. So let's do the next one. I think this is going to be a pretty color combination for a card. And we'll do the same thing on this one. A little innocent pink, holding everything in place. I'm just pressing that tape down that that butterfly was on. Okay. All 
right. And then a little dusty rose in the center. Just coming out a little bit. Just to deepen those areas. And then some red velvet right in the very center. So this uh, stamp set wasn't in a kit at one time? Nope, this was never in a kit. This is just a bundle. It's a layering stencil bundle. It's called Fluttering Fall, but again, it's, you know, we called it Fluttering Fall because it came out in the fall, but it's butterflies and they're good in the spring and the summer too. So I'm just reheating that up to reactivate that embossing powder. Gently. There we go. It's our shiny little butterfly. Okay. So now we have two. They're so pretty. Okay. And then this last one, we're going to do the same thing. Let me move these out of the way. I don't want anything to happen to them. You know how that goes, right? There we go. And they are very beautiful just the way they are. So if you don't want to add the pink or you're more into turquoise, something like that, by all means, do your thing. It'd be a very beautiful wedding card too, wouldn't it? Just in gold or silver butterflies without any anything else. Just a little bit of red in the center. I'm just doing Valentine's Day colors. <laughs> What is opening about embossing order? Susan, I don't know what you mean. What is the opening? Oh, well, I, I think what you mean is like, why did I emboss first? Um, it's because if the ink isn't completely dry, you lose a lot of the details because the embossing powder just gets everywhere. And so, and then I'm just embossing it again because there's like a little bit of ink maybe on the top and that just kind of absorbs it into the embossing powder and it brings a little bit more of the shine back. Okay. All right. Yes, it is difficult to do the butterflies if you don't cut them out first. And it's like that with lots of embossing stencils or, you know, three layering stencils. Cutting them out first sometimes helps you nail the exact spot that you want to color in or you want to, you know, layer color down on. And if you, um, you know, if you, oh, well, I did promise I would show you how to clean this. Okay. So I'm going to just spray a little bit of stamp cleaner on this. And then I'm going to use a paper towel to get all of that off of there. There we go. That's all clean. See it nice and clean. And then you can just take a little bit of glass cleaner or just a little soap and water if you want. And um, you know, put a little bit of that on there. Just got a little glass cleaner here. Just to get the oily residue from the stamp cleaner off. And good as new, brand new. See? So it won't damage your stuff at all. And if you're not using the pigment ink, it's even easier to clean the stencil because all you have to do is take your tidy towel and you can just clean it that way. Clean the ink off. Just be careful with your stencils that you try not to bend any of the parts. And if you don't like the little red residue that's left there, then use the stamp cleaner and that'll get all of that off. I make a mess when I stencil. But a messy stencil is a loved stencil, right guys? 
just like all the other supplies. <laughs> okay, so let's get this back. And we're going to do something with this. So my idea is to lay these beautiful butterflies just down the card in a row. And I want to leave a little space for a greeting. Or just pop a little greeting. I'm going to use one of the strip sentiments from the new kit. I'm going to use love you so much. And I'll cut that out and that will just get placed on there. But I want to do a little something to the background here. But I don't think I want it to be pink because I don't want to take the pink away from the butterflies. And although that's very elegant and very pretty, I'd love to have something that appears like a little bit of texture. So I think I've got all my messy stencils in here. I think I'm going to do something like... You know what would be really pretty is this fizzy stencil, this one right here, because, you know, the butterflies have the little circles in there, so I think it'll all play out together. And then I was thinking about using a little bit of soft stone ink, although now that I've made my design uh, gold, I'm wondering if I should do something different because gold and gray, I don't know. Um, maybe we should do something like Sandy Beach, which might look a lot nicer with the gold. What do you think? Sandy Beach more than the gray? I like the gray idea, but I think the gray might be better with silver. And I want it to be almost undetectable. So I'm not, I don't want to go into like color color. I want it to be a neutral. So I think I'm going to go with the sandy beach. Okay. Looks like most of us think that's a good idea. So we're going to do that. Okay. And again, now this stencil does not obviously fit. We could do it this way, which is what I'm thinking of doing. And that's going to give us enough because I don't want to go right to the edge anyway. So I'm just gonna turn my stencil on an angle like that. How's that for an idea? I'm going to clean my brush because I get the feeling that there's some brown on here that I don't want. So I'm gonna clean my brush on a paper towel and just get rid of that. Yeah, I think gray is better with silver too. Yep, and honey mustard is a good match, but you're definitely going to see a lot of honey mustard if I use that. So I like honey mustard if I want to see more of it, but since I want to see less, I'm going to go with Sandy Beach. Okay. So, again, I mean, you could spend a lot of time taping everything down. I'm just going to put a little bit of tape on the back just to hold it in place on my cardstock here. And then it won't shift around and I can put my stencil right there. So I'm going to go heavy in the center and then lighter as I go out. Okay. Really inking up the brush well. This is such a pale color that you, it's very hard to over ink. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start in the center. Right up the center. And then I'm just gonna work my way out really lightly. I mean, you probably barely see this once I get everything on there, but it'll give it a little texture. And again, I'm not going all the way to the edge. So let's see how that looks. Oh, that's pretty. It's kind of dreamy looking, isn't it? And you'll be able to see this better in the picture that I post after the video. Always takes me a little while to take the picture and then get it off of my phone and you know how that goes. Okay, so let's get this down onto this black layer. I hope a lot of you guys have this set. And if you don't, pick it up. It's a great value. I think it's really fun to, to work with. And it is one of those sets that just, it's great for all year round. 
So I cut myself an innocent pink card base. For the mini slim line, the size you want to do is six and a quarter by six and a half. And then you're going to find that six and a half side. See, this is six and a quarter here by six and a half. You want to find the six and a half side, and then you want to score it at three and a quarter. I just have to think about my math as I'm saying it. And then we'll just push this down to the back of the tool to get that laying as flat as possible. Okay, so there we go. Let me back out just a hair. I am too close. Okay, so this will be the look of the card. And again, Innocent Pink is a warm pink, so the warm tones, the gold, it all really works nicely together. And I'm going to tape this onto my card base. Now, just for the purpose of this, I'm, I'm going to put a little tape on the inside here just to close it. I will erase that with my mono sand eraser later. Okay, there we go. And now we can position these butterflies. Now I'll tell you what I think they need. And this is just me, but I think they need some little micro tiny black sequins kind of going down their bodies. And I know this is gonna take a few minutes, but I feel like we need a little black on these guys. So I'm gonna do it. And then it does go great with my shirt sleeves, doesn't it? <laughs> Woo, I got sequins everywhere. I feel like a little bit of sequins, we'll just lay them on there and see what you guys think. Um, and I'm thinking these medium sized ones, like just a little something to accent them and make them stand out a little bit more, separate them from each other. Little detail, right? Because then, then you can kind of see, and I can use these really tiny ones for down their bodies. And I don't have to do the whole thing. These are tiny. These were the brainchild of Karen Hightower. She said, I need black sequins. You need to do black. And so we did them. Let's just see. Let's just take a moment to see what they look like. They'll be much easier to put down when they have glue. But you see what I'm saying here? Doesn't that just kind of give them, it'll give a little more sparkle and it'll make you be able to see them. Because normally I would do the, the insides here in black. And if I had been thinking, I actually probably would have used black embossing powder on this part of them. But you get the idea, right? So I think we're gonna do that. Okay, we won't do it now. We'll do it in a little bit because I gotta do the rest of this first. And I don't wanna waste the time if I'm just gonna have to do it a second time. So let's cut out our greeting. And I want to use this. I want to use Love You So Much because I want this to be a Valentine's themed card. So let me get my thing. I should have cut this out earlier. But if you're not sure what you want to do, sometimes you got to drag the machine out more than once. <laughs> it's okay. I am going to... I'm just off to the side here trimming this little column of greetings out. So I know you can't see that, but all I did was just trim that little section out there so that I can cut it. So for this, I'm going to use one of the sentiment strip dies. I don't know which one here. That would work. Let's see if we go one smaller. That would work one smaller. That would work too. I think I'm going to go with the smaller one because of the slim line. Let's see actually hold this up. Well, that wouldn't be bad. The bigger one wouldn't be bad. And that gives us a little more black. So let's do that. Now, even though I think I'm good, I don't feel that strong about it today. <laughs> so I'm going to tape it down to be safe. Trust myself. 
Oh, Tom, mm -hmm. I saw somebody earlier ask if we have a word of the day. I don't know if you have one, but. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm always putting Tom on the spot. <laughs> so very often young kids, babies and grandchildren and such go through a phase where they just can't wear a diaper. They throw it off and have a hard time keeping on a diaper. Oh, I remember those days. Okay, so in that case, <laughs> those kids would be considered undependable. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. I see. <laughs> With depends, I get it. <laughs> undependable. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and then Tom just retreats back into the dead space. <laughs> but um bump. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to first place everything where I want it. That's pretty funny, Tom, actually. I like that. I'm going to place these where I want them. I'm going to put this one down here. I want to see more of the hearts on that one. This guy, we can have him overlap a little bit. And then we can put this right here. And then we can add our sequence. Okay, let's do it. Should we pop them up or no, let's tape them flat. Because there's already going to be sequins on there. And I've got to mail this card to somebody. So I'm going to make sure it's mailable. All right, don't get that one in place. That looks good. Should we do this one next? And then this one down here? Yeah, let's do this one right in the middle with the hearts. Overlap just a little bit. That was pretty funny, Tom. I'm your biggest fan. <laughs> okay. So you see I've made a little bit of extra space in between those. And then this will go right. Oh, here. now there's a good follow-up. What's that? Mary Kay said unhuggable. Oh, very good. <laughs> See, you throw an idea out there and you get all kinds of... All kinds of feedback. I love that. That's cute. Mary Kay's got a good mind. All right, I just want to grab that one and have it just come up a little bit. There we go. Okay. All righty. So now we're going to add those little sequins on there little bitty sequins. Let me find my little glue bottle here somewhere. I know it's here somewhere. Where's... Sorry, I know I'm not on the screen right now. Okay. Here it is. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. So, Let's add, got to add a big one on the head, and then we'll add one, two, we'll just put some little dots going down like that. See how tiny the dots can be. Looks kind of cute with the white. All right, here we go. Wish me luck. I'm going in. Doing the heads first. Music's nice, Tom. Thank you for always entertaining us with some nice music. All right, these little guys are really tiny. So, 
and they're sticking to me because I am staticky. Okay. Oh my goodness. Cup words. Cup words, yes, cup words. They're going cupward. If they could stay on at all with my staticiness. I'll do some bigger ones. This might take a while. So what else do we have going on? Oh, see, they're a little stickier down here. But I'm sticky because I have glue on my finger. There we go. Somebody needs to invent a tool. Maybe I should invent it. Maybe I shouldn't say anything and invent it. That drops sequins without you having to touch them. Maybe I should use tweezers. I'm gonna drop the glue right into the center of the sequin. That's another way you could probably do it. But I think the black sequins will make the difference, no matter how much of a struggle it is to get them on there. I think once they're all dry, it'll be worth it. If you have another type of embellishment, you can use that as well. I used to have these little strips of rhinestones that were really pretty too. They probably would look really good. But I'm trying to use these here. Okay. Yep, the finishing touches, they take a little while, but they make a difference. And of course, once they, uh, once they dry, I'm taking so long my glue is drying before I can let go. Usually don't have trouble with sequins, but let me find this. Let's see if this works. Now I feel like I'm in surgery. Scalpel? trying to operate left-handed, so this should end not well. Oh, see, these are the perfect stickiness down here. And if you find that your jewel picker won't let go of your embellishments, sometimes it's just glue that's stuck on the tip. So definitely clean it once in a while. These are tiny. Does that tool have a name that you work with the sequins on? Uh, this is called a Marvy Jewel Picker. And it's great. It's very sticky. It is my favorite jewel picker. Um, but it is very sticky and sometimes if it's very staticky, it doesn't work as well. I could stop at three. <laughs> Put a little more glue on here. Just going to take my time because we've got the time. All right, and then we are going to give this away to somebody. Somebody's going to know all the love that went into these sequins. I might do the rest of these off camera just so that it's not taking so long. Do we have a release plan for this month? We do. It's going to be at the end of the month, so stay tuned for that. We've got a brand new kit coming at the end of the month. I'm excited about the kit. I think you guys will be too, because what we did with this next kit coming up is we've picked a couple of your favorite products, your all-time favorite products, and we've done something that we think you're going to love. I don't know if that's a, too much of a hint or not, but this one has to go down flat. There we go. We're getting there. 
the black makes a difference, doesn't it? You got to do the black because you got to have all that sparkle in there too. Yeah, they do. They do. I'm willing to struggle to get these black sequins on here. So, all right. So yes, that our next release is going to be at the end of February. So stay tuned for that. Just a couple more on here and I think we're good. This is drying up nicely now. There we go. I think that's good. I think that works. That's just enough. What do you guys think? Worth it? Worth the struggle? I think so. <laughs> All right. So there we have a little bit of layered stenciling with a touch of embossing. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's a hobby, so it's okay if it takes a little bit longer. No sense in rushing. I just want to make sure they're all flat and straight. That one is giving me fits. I need to redo that one. All right, Tom, so you get in here. All right. There you are. Out of the dead space. Out of the dead space. <laughs> and um, you have to pick a winner for this card. And this card, I'm telling you, man, this blood, sweat, and tears went into this one. Yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'll clean that up a little bit. Okay. Cheesy drum roll, please. <laughs> Cheesy drum roll. <laughs> All right, the lucky winner tonight, today, wherever you may be, Janet Trap. Yay, Janet. Janet. Janet! Hey, Janet! Congratulations, Janet! Awesome. So, Janet, just send your name and your address to info at GinaKDesigns.com, and we will get this mailed out to you. All right, and if you have won a card in the last couple of weeks, I've got like four cards sitting on my desk right now that have to go out. So, they're all going to go out by the end of tomorrow. All right, everybody. Well, this was so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you, uh, you'll you make a little card like this and give this technique a try. I should be back this, this week, either Thursday or Friday, with a new five-minute card or five-minute technique video. So stay tuned for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>